Welcome back to the African Homestead. I am Eric. Today we're going to talk about banana circles. Now behind me is the first banana circle I ever constructed. Now I have learned a lot about banana circles, what to do and what not to do since then, but this one I'm still pretty proud of what I was able to accomplish. Now for me, all banana circles start out the same way, a big hole in the ground. Specifically, I dig a hole about six feet in diameter and two to three feet deep. Now the first thing I put in that hole are logs. Nice size logs, if they're rotten, that's even better because you want that biological activity. You want the mycorrhizal fungi, you want the uh, bacterial life going on in there, and so that's the great foundation to a banana circle are rotten logs. From there, as you build it up, you wanna just go from large to medium-sized logs. Then you go to branches, sticks, leaves, grass, any kind of organic matter that can break down. And so you start with the biggest in the base and the smallest on top. And you wanna pile that up about twice as high as the hole is deep. Now, depending on your environment and your rainfall, uh, this is going to break down over the next, say, few months. And that big pile is gonna turn into a depression as everything gets broken down and uh, degraded. And that's when you add more on top. Again, you wanna add the smaller stuff. You're done with the logs, you're done with the, the, with the tree stumps and that kind of stuff. So you wanna add branches and leaves and grass and other organic matter that can break down easily. Uh, if you keep a, a bucket in your kitchen for kitchen scraps, any of that stuff that you normally throw in a compost pile, you can throw into this hole. Another great addition to this, if you have livestock, is to throw manure in there. That's also gonna help uh, feed it. It's gonna help turn, in, turn this into some great, great compost that is going to be able to feed everything you're gonna grow in this area later. Now, as you're waiting for everything in that pit to break down and become just rich, rich hummus and compost, hummus, humus, Anyway, as it breaks down, you're gonna to wanna to plant your bananas and your plantains. Now, one thing that I have learned, and I've learned the hard way, is what you put in that hole before you plant the banana, and I'm, I'm talking specifically about the holes you're planting the banana and plantain plant in, what you put in that is critical. And so, if you go in there and you fill that full of kitchen scraps and you fill it full of compost and you just give a really rich, rich soil in there, it is gonna pay you back by quickly growing and quickly producing. It's worth the extra effort to make sure that the soil you put in that hole when you're planting the, the bananas is very, very good soil. So as you're digging this hole, there are a few important things. You want the dirt you're taking out of there, you want to build a berm around the rim of this six foot diameter hole. And if you're building it on a slope, you wanna make sure you leave an opening on the upward side of that slope so as rainwater runs off the hill, it will run into the hole and that'll help with the decomposition, that will help with feeding the roots, keeping the, the banana, or in some cases people will also plant papaya in these circles, it'll keep them um, well moisturized, <laughs> well hydrated, well watered. Something else that is great about banana circles is you can plant other uh, companion plants with it. In my case, I like to put uh, lemongrass around it. I like to put pineapple. Um, once the center is broken down, it's a great place to grow a variety of things. I've actually had a volunteer pumpkin pop out of that because I throw you know pumpkin rinds and pumpkin seeds in there just to let it rot and it'll start growing and, and those do fantastic. I've had watermelon pop out of there. Um, but you can also plant, yeah, sweet potatoes are fantastic. Uh, I, I, turmeric is one of my favorite things that I've recently planted. Next thing I'm gonna try is ginger. That should do very well in this soil also. One last piece of advice, if it's something that you can incorporate into this design, is a water source. Uh, here at the African Homestead, I have three different banana circles that are fed three different ways. The one that is behind my home is fed by our kitchen drain, our faucet, our sink, kitchen sink drain, and it's also fed by our washing machine. Bananas are fantastic at processing gray water, and so that's a great source. We also have an outside shower, and so that water from the shower goes to our banana circle. And in the last place in our guest rooms, the, uh, the shower from our guest rooms also feeds a banana circle. And so it's a, just a fantastic way to recycle gray water. And it's also a valuable source of water 
in the dry season. Here in Liberia, we can have rain, some rain every month of the year, but the majority of the rain, the almost 200 inches of rain that we get out here falls within a six month rainy season. During our dry season, we may have a month go with maybe a half inch or an inch of rain. And for bananas, they love water. And so during our dry season, having that extra water coming from a washing machine, coming from a sink, coming from a shower is really a blessing to help them continue growing and producing. So that is my 101 class on banana circles, AKA plantain circles, AKA papaya circles. I hope you found the information valuable. And even if you're in North America or somewhere that's not tropical like here, uh, maybe it's something that you could incorporate in your design. 